Hello, welcome to Biggest Little Library. It's Amy and Tammy and Jamie with the Friday Four from the Cirque Desk. Four quick recommendations we think you're going to love. And let's talk about that. (laughs) (laughs) We are excited to have a re-release week of the Debbie Steers episode. And so we have four new books for our Friday Four that deal with using our Libby library app. card yeah. or a Libby app, yeah. right? right? Libby. Yay, Libby. Yay. Okay. Tams, what do you got over there? So I I, I just want to say, as I went through mine, there were over 140 books. I know. Wow. You are really good at your Libby. You yeah. are. So I almost always have a, like a lineup of audiobooks coming. Mm-hmm. And the one book, I, as I scrolled back through, that was very profound, and I remember I listened to it back and forth on my way to school, is Between the World and Me by ta Coates. And this came out in 2015. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, a, it's a short read. I mean, it's 152 pages, but I listened to it, and I think that's how every single person should experience this book because he's reading it himself, and it is a lengthy letter to his adolescent son and it really delves deep into um how america has really built this empire on the idea of race and how the falsehood that damages us is um really at the expense of black men and black women Mm -hmm. and um they're just exploited through slavery and segregation and threatened today with you know lockup and and we just you know we've we've had our year two years of um all of the events that have taken place with the black lives matter movement and just the other day they were talking again about the black wall street and the burning of black wall street that was not in our textbooks in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And this is such a heartfelt gripping work by um, Mr. Coates about um, these larger questions and, and what the consequences are for his son. And it just is, I just got, gave myself, um, goosebumps from it because it is so powerful and it just just makes you cry and he reads off the names of some of these young boys Mm -hmm. who have been killed and um, he's just so concerned for his son and wants his son to grow up to be a man and he knows that he has all these struggles to overcome so it is such an important book and I, I loved it. And I think it's um, especially powerful because he's reading his own words. So uh, Between the World and Me by ta Coates. I'm going to have to, that's up in on my to read list. Have you read it yet? Jay? I read it, but I think listening to it sounds really more yeah. powerful than I mm-hmm. thought it was a pretty powerful read. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love that it was in the format of a letter to his son. I thought that was really special. And um I think listening to it, it's always my favorite when you listen and the author's reading their own work. Mm -hmm, But in this case, I think that would just be Mm -hmm. a special, a special listen. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. Do you know how many hours it was? It it does say, let me, um, it's four hours. Yeah. Yeah. That's manageable. I'm I'm going to put that on my thing right now. I'm actually going to put it on right now because I've been dying to read that. (laughs) Yes, I can do that. (laughs) Jamie, do you want to tell us your books? Sure. Um, So I find, um, I really like Libby for audiobooks. And we do that often before we're going to take a road trip. Oh, yes. And so we'll pick out a few that, you know, both Rob and I want to read. And um, we'll download them before we go. But I did over this last year, um, because the library was a little more limited with their um, hours, during COVID. And I really missed walking into the library and looking at the lucky day shelf. That was always my favorite thing to do. And so I decided that I would um, try checking a few books out on Libby that were just the ebook version, which I had not done until this last year. So last winter, I did that. And I enjoyed reading a little bit more than I thought I was going to on the Libby app. Um, I thought I was going to really dislike the digital format 
and it was okay. It's hard to like mentally get yourself there when we're like, we're in the world of like hard books. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I'm so used to picking up a hard book, but I have to say there's something about the convenience factor of having it on a device. Absolutely. Especially if like you show up at a doctor's office or you're at an appointment and you've forgotten the book, but oh, lo and behold, you can open it up on your phone and you can read now. Granted, I need my glasses and it's really (laughs) hard to see, but like if you bring your, your iPad or something like that, it does make it nice. It is nice. It's nice not to have to carry the physical book around sometimes for yeah. that reason. Yeah. The it, convenience. I think it does give you the option now too of sending it to Kindle. The it Kindle did. App. Yeah. So it did I know give sometimes I've done that. Yeah. yeah. I thought what I really wasn't going to like is that I really like to see how many pages are left in the chapter yes. when I start a chapter. Yeah. But on the Libby app, it tells you what percent until you get done yeah. Or does it tell you pages, maybe, actually? Kindle well, is percent, right? Well, and sometimes it's a weird number. Like, yeah. right. it'll say, like, LOC, which I don't know what that means. <laughs> no. And it's just this number. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? How many more pages? Right. <laughs> yeah. But you can um, digitally flip ahead if you have to. Like, sometimes I have to know mm-hmm. how many more pages I have until I'm done with this chapter. Do you know what my husband told me um, just this weekend? He said that, he's like, well, you know, on my Libby app. And I looked at him, I'm like, what do you mean? You have a Libby? And he goes... Yeah, I read magazines all the time. They're free on the Libby app. And I was like, huh. Oh. He actually is in the middle of a book and he's got the hard copy of the book. And he's like, I love that we're not buying books, but he's like, this is really hard to travel with because he packs so light when he's going. And so he's like, I think this is my last like hard copy book. And I said, that's fine. That's fine. But we were talking about how I said, well, are you doing books on Libby? He goes, well, no, I've been mostly doing magazines. He's been using Audible or, okay. or, um, the Amazon Prime, he'll read that way. For, he'll get okay. his digital book that way. And I'm like, you know, you can get him for free on Libby, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what books okay. did you have? So um, I, um, in the middle of winter, was reading this series by Ellen Hildebrand. It's not my typical type of read, but it's a series, um, the Paradise series. And my good friend Aubrey got me hooked on the books because during quarantine, she purchased a few books when her library was closed. She lives in Seattle. And so she had brought me a couple of the books she had purchased. And the these uh, first two were from that series. And so I got done with those two. And I was like, well, I got to read the third book in the series <laughs> right. now. And so I checked that one out on Libby and it's called Troubles in Paradise. Um, so this, the series kind of highlights um, this family and there's some secrets in the family. The husband um, kind of had a second life, you find out right away, in St. John. And apparently Ellen Hildebrand um, travels to St. John every year. It's kind of her place. So she goes back and forth between the East Coast I'm not exactly sure where she lives on the East Coast. I think the other books she writes are are set in like Nantucket. Mm -hmm. Could be wrong about that. Um, And I haven't read any of those. These are the only ones I've read by her. But then because she loves St. John so much... um, and she's a huge fan of, you know, the area and she, you know, wanted to, it sounds like promote it in her writing. And she picked, you know, this location to set the story. And it was, it was a fun series. I really enjoyed it. A little predictable, I thought at times, but a nice kind of take your mind off of whatever's happening. The troubles of the world. Right. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a good time to be reading something like that last winter. Right. <laughs> fun. So that was a fun one. Um, my other one was a recommendation from the romance episode from Taryn. Oh. And I'm not a huge romance reader, but every time I pick up a romance, I end up liking it. Mm-hmm. So, so makes maybe me think, you are. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Um, this one was called Boyfriend Material. And what drew me to it is it takes place in London. And of course, as we all know, <laughs> yes. I'm fascinated with London and Paris right. and having um, just traveled there for the first time about a year ago. And so um, it's the story of uh, two guys in London and it's kind of start, their relationship kind of starts off as a facade um, to help out one of the, the guys who kind of needs to improve his image with his workplace a little bit. He's a little unreliable. And so um, they, you know, of course, is a little predictable that, you know, the facade is going to turn into a real romance, but it was compelling. I thought the story was compelling and I loved reading about all the places they went to in London and just kind of daily life in London. Super fun. Awesome. Oh, I love it. So 
And now you aim. I know. What do you have? So I, I went on this kick um, with watching uh, Jim Gaffigan, his show. Oh my oh, gosh, he's so hilarious. Fun. I yeah. know, and his voice is just like <laughs> cracks me up. So um, I read. Thank you. <laughs> I know. I just love him. So I read um, Dad is Fat. Oh my gosh. By Jim oh, yes. Gaffigan. Fun. And actually, I listened to it and it's only about five hours, but he reads it. And of course, it's like sitting in one of his comedy shows. And I do love listening to funny things. It's almost like listening to a Brian Regan show. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like yes. sometimes you just need to laugh. And he has such great timing and his humor is dry and you know observational and so sometimes you just sit there and think I can totally see him picture him saying like this live or I just I love him I think he's hilarious he is and it's a quick one so Mm -hmm. you know dad is fat and the title the title in and of itself is like the greatest Mm -hmm. ever yeah and it's like written in crayon because he's got a bunch of kids and I just like him he seems like a good family man he's Mm -hmm. got clean humor clean humor is my thing I don't I don't need to hear like every f-bomb no me either you know I know that makes me a little bit I don't know straight laced but I do love the clean humor and he's one of them so he's good at it he is really Mm -hmm. good at it Mm -hmm. yeah dad is fat Jim Gaffigan (laughs) thanks for spending time with us today we hope you enjoyed the four books that we had um, talked about our Libby app. For other great book recommendations, check out our blogs on our website at biggestlittlelibrary.net. And join us next Tuesday as we re-release the romance episode. And we have some other books coming your way for that too. See you in the stacks. <laughs>